If we don't like the Constitution as written and we think it needs to be amended, well, under Article 5 of the Constitution, there's a process to do it. And you know what? If we don't like the way Congress, the law Congress makes, well, Congress, of course, is free to change it. And if we, the people, still don't like the way Congress writes the law when they refuse to respond to the will of the people, we have a right to replace members of Congress. That's the way a democracy runs, not by a judge dictating to us what he or she thinks is good for us. Well, I was also troubled by a couple of other areas, specific areas in her uh, interpretation of the law, one that has to do with the power of the federal government. And I mentioned that a moment ago. Under the Commerce Clause of the United States Constitution, the Supreme Court has previously basically uh, given the uh, federal government almost limitless powers. And we've seen that at play here in the debate over the individual mandate in the health insurance uh, bill that was recently passed. Unprecedented reach of federal power into our living rooms where you're sitting on your couch and said, you know what, the federal government demands that you purchase a government-approved health insurance policy, and if you don't, we're going to penalize you. That power is unprecedented, and that's why it's being litigated now. But uh, Solicitor General Kagan did not seem to recognize that the federal government's powers are one of enumerated powers, delegated by, delegated by the states and by the people, and all rights not delegated were reserved to the people and to the states.